Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Retina Roundup. I am Dr. Meru Agustin and I am going to bring you this month's top five articles. Let's start with the first article, which compared the outcome of submacular hemorrhage displacement using pneumatic displacement with intravitreal expansile gas versus pass planar vitrectomy with subretinal injection of tissue plasminogen activator, anti-VEGF agent, and air as primary surgery. This study was a retrospective interventional case series of 63 patients who underwent surgical displacement of submacular hemorrhage, secondary to neovascular age-related macular degeneration, or polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy. The mean post-operative visual acuity at six months was 0.67 and 0.91 for pneumatic displacement and subretinal injection group, respectively. Postoperative CST reduction was greater and complete foveal displacement and displacement to arcade or beyond were more frequent in the subretinal injection group. Two patients with failed pneumatic displacement were successfully treated with subretinal cocktail injection as a second operation. Hence, pasplanar vitrectomy with subretinal cocktail injection was found to be more effective than pneumatic displacement in displacing submacular hemorrhage with similar safety profile despite longer interval before operation, higher CST, and more extensive submacular hemorrhage at baseline. Moving on to the second article, which evaluated the longitudinal changes of posterior vortex veins in highly myopic eyes determined by retrospective analysis of ICG angiograms. Eyes that had posterior vortex veins and had undergone at least two ICG angiography examinations with a minimum interval of three years were studied. Over an average interval of 7.8 plus or minus five years, 41 of the 124 posterior vortex veins had marked changes consisting mainly of an attenuation of vessels in 36 posterior vortex veins and alterations in the drainage force in 16 posterior vortex veins. 15 had both types of changes. Most of the attenuations of the vessels occurred for smaller branches, but a complete loss of the entire trunk was seen in three eyes. Additionally, four eyes had posterior vortex vein changes in association with changes in peripheral vortex veins as well. Hence, it was concluded that the posterior vortex vein in highly myopic eyes can undergo changes with increasing time. The associated factors included the development and progression of myopic macular conditions. In some cases, the blood drainage shifted from posterior vortex vein to peripheral vortex vein by forming anastomotic channels. The third article studied full thickness macular hole closure with topical medical therapy. In this retrospective case series of full thickness macular holes managed by a single retinal physician were studied. Of 168 patients with full thickness macular holes, 71 patients were started on steroid, carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, and NSAID drops, and 49 patients were included in the analysis. 18 out of the 49 eyes achieved closure on topical therapy, of which 13 were idiopathic. On analysis, there was no significant difference in the final best corrected visual acuity for eyes undergoing pass planar vitrectomy versus those trialing drops before undergoing pass planar vitrectomy. Pearl size was directly correlated with odds of closure and the presence of VMT was found to be inversely related to successful closure. Hence, in this first study to date to report the overall efficacy and clinical characteristics of successful macular hole closure with topical therapy, drops achieved an overall closure rate of 36.7% with higher efficacy in smaller holes and those without VMT. Rates of macular hole narrowing and reduction in central foveal thickness acted as predictors of effectiveness of drop therapy. Coming to the fourth article, which described the association of serous maculopathy with absence of retinal pigment epithelium, or SMRP, and large trusen in patients with non-neovascular age-related macular degeneration. It was defined as subretinal accumulation of fluid within the macular area due to retinal pigment epithelium aperture. Large trusen were identified by the presence of sub RP deposits using multimodal imaging analysis. The median visual acuity was 20 by 100. Bilateral SMARP lesions were observed in 71% of study patients. 
All SMIRP lesions were hypoautofluorescent, located in the subretinal space between the RP and the ellipsoid zone, and presented as complete or incomplete RP apertures associated with subretinal fluid. Hence, it was concluded that bilateral SMIRP can occur in association with typical AMD large drusen anomalisms resulting in drusen biogenesis or mechanisms that act alongside to these may be related to SMIRP development. Heading towards the last article, which analyzed the outcomes of short versus long-acting gas tamponades in vitrectomy for rheumatogenous retinal detachment. I-33 eyes of 524 consecutive patients diagnosed with primary rheumatogenous retinal detachment, not complicated by proliferative vitreoretinopathy, and treated by vitrectomy at two clinical sites were retrospectively analyzed. Depending on the site the patients presented at, they received either preferentially long-acting gas tamponade or short-acting gas tamponade. Retinal redetachment rates during a period of six months following the surgery were analyzed. Rates of retinal redetachment in the long and short acting gas tamponade treated groups were found to be similar with 23 of 254 eyes and 24 of 246 eyes, respectively. Medium time to redetachment was found to be 5.7 weeks in the long acting gas tamponade treated group and 4.4 weeks in the short acting gas tamponade treated group. So, the use of short-acting gas tamponade results in comparable rates of successful retinal reattachment as long-acting gas tamponade. Given the faster visual rehabilitation with short-acting gas tamponade, these results suggest short-acting gas tamponade as a sensible alternative to long-acting gas tamponade in surgery of retinal detachment without PVR. That brings us to the end of this today's video. Thank you all and see you next month.